friends and foes, welcome to the Brushwork Podcast. My name is Stephanie Scott, and today we're talking about the importance of coffee shop shows. Let's get into it. Earlier this year, I met up with one of my past mentors, and as we were talking about my artwork and what I was doing and what I was thinking about next, my social media, and we were talking about different tactics to use, and she asked me, Stephanie, are you with a gallery yet? Or are you still doing coffee shop shows? And the way the way she said it was that coffee shop shows were not good and beneath my time and I shouldn't be doing them anymore and I needed to be in a gallery already because that's where success was. And that just rubbed me the wrong way. It rubbed me the wrong way. I I heard that and I, I was thinking about it and I was thinking, you know, coffee shop shows are fantastic you can make a decent amount of money with a coffee shop show. And they're, they're nothing to be swept under the rug. They're nothing to be considered a mere stepping stone towards the grand success of the world. And so I wanted to talk to you today about why they're great and also how to get one and mistakes I've made in the past decade of my artistic career when it comes to having a coffee shop show. So first off, we have to define the coffee shop show. It's what it says on the tin, so to speak, but it's also any show you have that is not the primary focus of its destination, right? So people don't come to coffee shops for art. They come for coffee. They don't go to your tea house to have artwork. They come for tea and company. <laughs> same thing Same thing happens for, you know, dentist offices and tax offices and places like that. So when I say coffee shop show, I, I mean a coffee shop, but I also mean every other establishment where art is not the focus. I would say that the first seven years of my professional career consisted of shows in coffee shops, tea houses, and one time a real estate office. These shows were local to my studio. They were viewed by my friends and my family and almost no one outside of the people I knew came or bought any paintings there. It was, it was very intimate, it was very local, and it was perfect for where I was as a beginner in my profession. I would think, I think that when you're a beginner, the first thing you're worried about is making good art. And that's, that's perfect, it's perfect for a beginner to have. Worrying about, can I get my craft to match my the images in my brain? <laughs> Can I get good at technical things? Can I get good at, you know, presenting the work and framing it and, you know, all those little things. At some point, you're going to get the courage and the desire to show your work, which is, it's so exciting. Like the first time I got a little inkling that I wanted to show my work and put it out in public, I was one, terrified and also too impressed with myself that I even got to that point. <laughs> it was a good feeling. I remember the very first coffee shop show I had. I had sent a message to the manager of a store that was three blocks down from me. And I, I sent them a note and I was like, hey, do you have any openings this year for, for artists? Because I, I noticed every time I go there that there was new art on the walls. So about once a month. And in that email, I had attached photos of my work, like things that were dry and ready to go. And I had my, you know, my work email and also my phone number and all that stuff. And I just crossed my fingers and hoped they would get back to me. And after a week or so, the manager did. Her name's Emily. Shout out to you, Emily. You're the best. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> and she's like, we actually are very booked up in this place. Um, we have an opening at the beginning of next year. So I was like, okay, I'll take it, right? And I was thinking, okay, so I have almost a year to make artwork for this little shop, which was fabulous for me since none of the work I had made that was like ready to go matched each other. It was like, here's a horse painting and here's a landscape painting and here's a painting of some shoes I drew and here's an actual pair of shoes I drew on and you know, yada, 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 nothing matched, nothing was cohesive. So I spent the rest of the year basically when I wasn't working on commissions making a cohesive body of work. I wanted to have 12 paintings. I wanted them to be thematically the same and I wanted them to be in similar sizes. Shall I tell you how the show went? <laughs> I, 
I ended up making 15 paintings, which was amazing. Half of them had wires on the back to hang up onto the walls. Uh, half of them did not. <laughs> Two of them were still wet with oil paint, because I'm an oil painter. Uh, three of them were properly framed and looked really professional. And one of them had a rip down the side of the canvas that I had painted on and forgotten to fix. And and honestly, the, the final one, the final one was really, frankly, unfinished. It was, it was a mess. I had a year to do it. <laughs> And I and I barely got it put together. But you know what? I brought it to the shop and I said to myself, I made a commitment to show my work at the shop. I asked for this. And even though I was overwhelmed, I was like, I'm going to put it on the walls and we're going to see what happens. So I, I, I loaded up my car and I drove to the coffee shop three, downs, three doors down the block, right? And I, I show up and it's it's midday and the shop is packed. There are people at every single table. There are kids running around with like hot chocolates and whipped cream. There are three baristas working at the counter <laughs> and they look at me with my big box of art and they just like their eyes widen a little bit and they're like, really? Now? You chose to come now to hang art? And I was like, here I am, and oblivious to all of this. So I finally, I, I find a table that's opened up and I start pulling at work and I look at the wall and I realize that I hadn't really made a plan as to how I was gonna hang it on the wall. And I thought, okay, well, I'll just put one up whenever, you know, I see a good spot for it and I'll, I'll you know, try and fix the, the height it's hung at and things like that. So it took me three hours, three hours to hang 15 paintings on the wall because I had to wait until customers left the tables that were right in front of the wall so I could like run up and hang something and then go back and make sure it was like in line with the rest of them. And side note, I had terrible level, like sensitivity. <laughs> all of my paintings were crooked. None of them were spaced evenly. But you know what? I got them all up. And then I realized that I had forgotten my business cards. I had forgotten to print off my artist statement. I had forgotten to give an inventory list to the shop manager. It was a mess. It was a mess. I think it took me a week total to actually get the whole show put up, but then I did it. I was so proud of myself. I, I still have photos and maybe I'll put them in the show notes of my very first show, but I, I did it. I got them up there and then I spent the rest of the month bringing people to the coffee shop and having coffee and being like, hey, can I show you my fancy new work in person? Two people, two friends of mine bought some paintings, which was very kind of them. And... I sometimes I'll go to their house and I, I see them up there and it, it brings back the good memories of that very first show. So basically what this show did is it allowed me to make mistakes in a venue where mistakes were okay. People came to the shop for coffee and they got art as well. And it was, you know, a beginner's, beginner's work, but they got it there and it was okay that I had paintings that were crooked and one painting that was smudged because I hung it up wet, and that I didn't get labels put onto the wall until two days after I hung the artwork, and the labels were handwritten and sloppy, and they didn't look very good, but they were up there. And that's, that's the beauty of having a coffee shop show. Getting to make mistakes is perfect for when you're an emerging artist, and there's, there's no place better for it in, than in these kinds of spaces. You know how you're an artist, your creative type and you practice your craft over and over and over again, right? You practice drawing, you practice painting, you practice editing photographs, et cetera, and et cetera. You also have to practice having a show. You need to get in as many shows as possible. You need to apply for as many shows as possible. You need to practice being a part of the community that you're showing your work in. So having as many coffee shop shows under your belt as, a, as an emerging artist, as a beginning professional, it's so important. Small shows and coffee shops are blessings to the emerging artist. You learn so much, not just about hanging the show, but you learn about marketing. You learn about getting people to come to an opening if you have one of those. You learn a, <laughs> you, you learn how to get people to really show up for you and your work. You learn how to talk to strangers about your art if you happen to be in the shop while um, someone's there looking to buy something. You learn how to meet up with strangers who want to buy your work if that happens, which... Sometimes it does. How cool is that? Honestly, bless that first coffee shop for allowing me to have a show. It was 
the biggest confidence boost I could ever ask for. And I, I still do coffee shop shows to this day. I've been a professional artist for 10 years, and I think I've done at least a dozen, if not more, shows in shops like these. As I move throughout my career and I start to get into group shows and galleries, I don't think I'll ever stop approaching the coffee shop. I'll never stop approaching the tea house, asking them to let me put my art on their walls. It's really fantastic. So now I have some tips for you. If you're looking to hang some work in a coffee shop, tips on how to talk to a manager, tips on what to do and what to bring. And I even made a very fancy, mighty coffee shop show checklist just for you. I'll have it linked in the show notes. It's pretty great. And I think it's, I mean, I wish I had this checklist when I, <laughs> when I was making artwork for the show. So here are some reasons why you should have the coffee shop show. Number one, you get to put them on your resume. No one knows that Cactus Canyon is a coffee shop in Seattle and not a cool gallery somewhere else, right? <laughs> Nobody knows it. You get to put it on your re resume. It makes you look established because you are establishing yourself. That's what you're doing. And it's, it's just, it's perfect, right? Okay, so num number two, you learn how to have a show. Showing your work is a great feat for the artist. And like anything you, you need to practice, you need to have a lot of shows, as, as many as you can get. Practicing having shows by hanging work at tea houses, at coffee shops, and other places where people aren't there for art is the perfect grounds for it. And once you have a dozen or so of these under your belt, you're gonna create the confidence and the ability to go for the bigger fish, so to speak. Your art will have improved naturally throughout the years as you do these smaller shows You'll be bringing in more money as you promote them and actually make sales in these shops. It's top tier, it's 10 out of 10. Number three, you get to learn how to have an opening, right? My first show, I personally invited 20 people to come and three of them showed up. <sighs> Bless those three people, thanks for coming. And one of you bought my artwork, it was so good. <laughs> now that I'm better at marketing and networking, because I learned how to have openings, I can rely on bigger turnouts to my shows, which is, it's just like a party every time. It's so, so much fun, it's so much fun. Number four is you get to see your work in literally a new light. So when you have your work up in a coffee shop, they have their own lighting, they have their own atmosphere going on, and you get to see your work in a totally different situation. And you get to self-evaluate yourself as an artist. Self-evaluation as an artist is, gosh, it's magic for growth. You, you can't ask for anything better. So, so get in the coffee shop. <laughs> so here, friends and foes, is the Mighty Coffee Shop show checklist. I have all of this written out for you. So if you wanted to download it, you could and use it for yourself. But for now, here's what I do every single time I have a small shop show. Two months before the show two months and make sure everything's secured, right? So I have emailed a manager and I'm talking to them and I'm asking, what day do I need to show up? What time do I need to show up? And also I, I don't accept shows that are anything less than two months away. So if someone approaches you and they're like, hey, I have this opening for the shop. Can you hang some art? Unless it's a very specific chance, I like, unless it's a very specific situation, I don't accept these shows simply because I won't have enough time to prepare for it. If I happen to have precisely the amount of inventory and everything else I have got going from a previous show, maybe, is up to speed, I might say yes, but otherwise I say no. So two months before the show, secure it. You talk to the manager, you say, what time am I showing up? What time am I taking down? Do I need to sign any contracts? And there should be a contract. If there isn't one, you should make one up for yourself. And um, you need to secure information such as us. Like, do they take a, a commission? How much is the commission? Do you need to sign anything? Is there any insurance you need to find? Every, every shop I've ever shown in is different. They all do it differently. So make sure everything is ready to go two months before. Also two months before, I make sure that if I need to start any paintings, I'm starting it then at least two months before, right? It, earlier is better, but if I need to start new work to add to any old, in, I say old, previous inventory, <laughs> to any previous inventory that I have, start that now, especially if you're working in oil paints. 
The next thing is to design your artist statement. Okay, so your artist statement is gonna be something you print out and post on the wall next to your artwork. In this art artist statement, you want to have one, a picture of you, two, instructions on how to purchase your work, three, multiple ways to contact you, that's social media, that's your email, etc. And uh, four, a paragraph or two describing the show that you're hanging, right? So if you have a show that's about, say, a geometric abstract artwork, I'm gonna say this is a series on geometric abstract artwork and it means X, Y, and Z, and this is how I started it, and this is kind of the process I went through, and this is why it's interesting, etc., etc. I'm not gonna go into how to write an artist statement. There are plenty of blogs on that. Maybe I'll do an episode another day. You've got your artist statement, check that off the list. Next is you need to be ordering your business cards two months before the show, okay? On your business card, you need to have at least a picture of what you do that's that's cohesive to the show you have hanging on the wall. If you have a, two different styles of art you're doing, maybe one is a landscape and one maybe is abstract, and you're hanging an abstract show, don't have the landscape cards shown with it. You, they need to match, right? Make sure all of your contact info is correct, up to date, you got your website, you got your email address, maybe a phone number if you feel like that, and that it features a high definition picture of one of your artworks on the back. Optionally, have a picture of yourself. People connect to faces and that's pretty handy. Okay, the card info needs to include your full name or the name you use as an artist, a social media handle, and your website. Keep it clean, keep it on brand to your work. Pro tips on emails. This is just a secondary pro tip. If your email is fluffybunny7 at whatever.com, you're not gonna get taken seriously. Try to have an email that has your full name in it or your artist name in it and just keep it as simple as possible. Use it exclusively for your art business. Another thing, this is, I would say this is more optional. If you have the funds for this, I like to do this. I like to have a freebie that I give out at the show, usually in the form of postcards. If you have the funds, design and order postcards for your show two months before the show with your contact info on it and a picture of one of the paintings or prints or whatever you have in the show on the flip side. And that way you can send these postcards to people about your opening, which is fun, and about the show, or you can just offer them as freebies at the show. It's it's very fun. Usually these will be 80 cents per postcard if you look for the right places. Some places are cheaper than others. Okay, so you've done all that. Now it's one month before the show. At this point, I want you to invite people to the show and the opening if you have one. Send out cards if you had them made. If not, just do this individually. Make a graphic to share on social media and that other people can share that has, you know, your picture, your contact info, when the, the date of the sh opening, if you have one, and the address of the coffee shop that you're showing in. Also one month before, I would make multiple social media posts about the show throughout the month. Maybe make a reel, maybe have a video of you creating the work or framing it up for the show. Get creative, but be reminding people consistently through the month about the show you have. I would say one month before, I would also be coordinating with your venue for the opening, if you have one. Explain what you wanna do, explain who you're inviting, if it's okay with them, what time would be best for them. Usually for coffee shops, they prefer to you to have an opening towards their closing. So if your coffee shop closes at 5 p.m., which is really common in Seattle, try and do it for 4 p.m. And that way, it's a concise time, your baristas don't have to stay any longer, and they know to expect lots of people if you invite them, right? Sometimes a manager might hire an extra person for that day if you're planning on having a big opening, right? So be considerate and be communicative and also be very polite. Be so polite to those managers. They do good work. Okay, two weeks before. Any work that you've been making for the show must be done two weeks before the show. It's so anxiety inducing to try and hang your work at a shop if you've been staying up the whole night before trying to get everything done. No, 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 don't do that. Especially if oil paints and it's time sensitive to drying time. Get Make sure everything is finished, like completely finished with your artwork two weeks before the shop. Also two weeks before, I would focus on getting everything ready to hang. Do you have frames for your work? Make sure that's all set. Do you need wires on the back of your panels? Make sure that's all finished two weeks before. Get any hanging tools you need. Like, do you have your hammer? Do you have nails? Make sure you contact your 
your, your show venue and make sure, like, sometimes they have wire hanging systems, sometimes it's holes in the walls. Make sure you follow their directions, okay? I would also make labels for each piece that you have. Um, I would do it printed, not handwritten. <laughs> On each label, you should have your name, the name and the date of the piece that you're hanging up, the dimensions and the materials, the price, and also your website. Have all of those on your little labels, print them out for each one, and usually you can double-sided tape them onto the wall neatly next to your paintings once it's hanging day. Two weeks before, I also like to make an inventory list with all the works that is for sale in list form. Have a small picture of the work next to each piece so it's easy for the staff to know which piece is being sold when someone asks to buy it. Um, include the name, the description, and the price next to each image. Get any freebies you have, your artist statements, and your business cards ready to go. If they haven't been shipped to you, it's probably too late to order them, but you can always put out more during the rest of the month. One week before, remind people once again on social media that you are having a show. And I would send out some personal invites to people at this time. Like personal texts, personal emails, being like, hey, you're a good friend of mine and I would love, or I would love for you to see the artwork I've been working on and I would personally like to show you the work sometime during the week. When are you free? Something like that. Send, send those kind of messages out and get people on your calendar. Doing this, doing that one thing, gets me more sales than anything else. One week before, I would also be doing any last minute fixes that need to be done. And I'd go to the venue with a sketchbook or your camera or your iPad or whatever, and plan how you want to hang your work. Like what order do you want things to go in? Kind of go during the day, look how people are you know, sitting in the shop, what areas get the best light, etc. Finally, it's hanging day. <laughs> things you want to bring. You want a hammer, you want a level, you want double-sided tape, you want your art, you know, the, the main event. <laughs> you want your inventory list, give this to the venue. You want your labels, your artist statements, your freebies, and your business cards. Get to the venue when you say you will. Try not to be too early or too late. The staff will be expecting you at a specific time. And even if the staff don't make it a big deal one time, just try and create a reputation of being punctual. It'll be really good for you in the future. At this point, you just start hanging your work. I would say start with your best pieces in the most well-lit place in the shop. Places where when you walk into the store, your eye goes to first. Where is that wall? Put your best pieces there. If there's any windows, those are gonna have really great light during the daytime. Carefully adjust the lights if you can and make sure your work is level and comfortable to see. Try not to crowd in too many pictures when you're hanging. I know it's easy to double stack them when you're on hanging on a wire. Try and have it really clean with enough space between them that it's easy to look at and not too crowded. You don't want to be hanging everything you've ever made on these walls. Keep it cohesive. Have a friend come and help you. If you can find a friend to come and help you, like that's gonna make it so fast. I once hung a show in 30 minutes because I had a friend helping me. It's very good. And also, if they can't help you, they can take pictures of you hanging the work on the walls, which is more content for social media. Fabulous. On hanging day, you need to apply your labels with double-sided tape, or if they're stickers, just hang them on the wall to the lower right side of each piece. Be consistent on where you're placing the labels according to each piece so it's easy for everyone to see the label and know where it belongs. Hanging it between art pieces, it gets confusing. You're like, does this label belong to the left or to the right? Sometimes you don't know. Tape your artist statement to the wall or if it's on a, if you happen to like put it in a frame, hang it on the wall. Put out your business cards, put out your freebies if you have them by the register or an easy to reach place, easy to see place um, for people to look at and take. And here's a, Here's a pro tip, take lots of photos of your work, all hung up, shiny and spick and span. And another pro tip, which is, I always like to have one piece of work marked as sold at the beginning of the show. This is usually a painting I have in my personal collection or I'm not intending to sell anyways. So I just put a little sold sticker right at the beginning. I'm not sure about the exact psychology of it, but when people see one piece of work as sold, they're more inclined to buy artwork themselves. I don't know what it is, but have a piece marked as sold right at the beginning. A little red star is always fun. <laughs> Let's say you are doing an opening, which is really fun. Be dressed semi-formally in comfortable clothes you won't have to fidget with. Greet everyone who comes and offer to tell them about the work personally. 
hand out your cards if you have them, hand out postcards if you have them, have friends take a photo of you with the people who show up, and have a great time. Sometimes with openings, you might provide drinks, sometimes it might be food, sometimes it might be nothing, but try to have a, a fun, positive atmosphere about whoever shows up, even if it's only a few people. It's gonna be, it's gonna be good. For the remaining duration of the show, for the rest of the month, you've had your opening, you've set up everything, it looks spick and span. I like to take a photo of your work in the space and add it to Google Maps. That way people will see it when they're looking for that shop, it's kind of fun. I like to invite people to the coffee shop one, for some one-on-one -on -one time, as much as possible. Try and get like six people, if you can, to meet you at the coffee shop. It's really great for getting sales. It's, it's honestly, it's networking at its most essential self. You're building relationships with people who like your work. They're coming to see you as a professional artist that you are. And even if they don't buy a painting at this time, you are creating excitement for future, for the future of your artistic career. It's pretty great. Take lots of photos, videos, I've already said that, but I'm gonna say it again. Take lots of content. If you sell a painting, make it a big deal on your social media pages, because it is. I would also say, Share any graphics you've made about your show with the coffee shop owner or whoever runs their social media because they might post about you, which is cool. I would check up about two weeks after your, sh your opening to see if there's any business cards or postcards remaining and if they need to be replenished, do that then. As you go towards the closing the show, post on your social media about how it's the last week to sh the show is up and if you wanna see the work, now is the time to do it and I would personally love to see you there etc etc. So on your last few days of the show, some people choose to have like a closing ceremony. <laughs> ceremony is a strong word, like a, like, an, like the opening would be, but um, instead of an opening you have a closing and it's at the end of the month. Um, this allows people to take home the work that, that they've bought that day, which is kind of cool. You do all the same steps as an opening, um, maybe give a, like a little speech for thanking people for being there, etc. and non etc. Okay, so take down. It's the last day You've got your schedule to come take down the artwork either in the evening or the morning. As before, double check with the venue to make sure that they know when you're coming down to take artwork and uh, like, you know, make sure that that day's okay. Because honestly, one time I was asked to keep up my artwork for an extra two weeks because they were missing space out between me and the next artist. So always, always check towards the end of the month, if it's okay to take your artwork down then, or if they preferred having it up longer, which is just a win-win, isn't it? On that day, after you've taken down all the artwork, contact anyone who bought the work to make sure that they can pick it up either at the coffee shop when you're taking it down that day, or maybe you can deliver it to, it to them, or you can ship it to them, thank them, and make sure the payment is all handled, right? Carefully remove all of your work from the walls and all your labels. You wanna leave nothing behind, okay? No nails, no labels, no marks. Keep it clean. Make sure you take any remaining post and business cards and thank the staff and the manager who, who scheduled you. One last thing before we conclude this episode is on payment. Some coffee shops take percentages of your sale price and some don't take anything. They're usually very different. The most I've ever heard of anyone taking is 20% and sometimes that's nice. Some shops will handle the purchase of your work and give you a check afterwards, and some will ask you to handle the whole thing. It really depends on where you're going, so make sure you ask and clarify that before you even plan the show, right? Okay. If the shop handles payment, you'll probably get a check about two to four weeks after the show's over, so be patient and inquire if you need to. I really, really hope that this checklist is helpful and that you don't think of coffee shop shows as anything less than fantastic for your art career. Don't let people knock you for hanging work in coffee shops and, and the like. These small local places are big, big stepping stones for the artist and will absolutely further you in your artistic career. All right, friends and foes, thank you so much for listening to today's episode of Brushwork Podcast and about the importance of the coffee shop show. My name is Stephanie Scott. You can find me and Brushwork Podcast at stephaniescott.art on Instagram. That's also my website. Or you can reach us at, at brushworkpod on Instagram. Make good choices, everybody, and talk to you later. Goodbye!